Right everyone, Web Factor here. I just thought I'd do a quick intro for this next video. This is going to be a, a guest video from Peachinator showing you how to make a stab proof vest panel. It'll do a full how to and a demo at the end. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. And I'll just quickly say good work Peachinator. And um, yeah, enjoy the video. Hi everyone, Peachinator here. Obviously, not Weapon Collector, but one of his subscribers. Uh, quite recently, we've been talking about um, stab-proof vests and um, all the knife attacks that are happening around the country, and uh, mainly in London. The knife rate in London is apparently higher than in New York at the moment, so that's fun. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make... Uh, you don't have to copy this design exactly, by the way, uh, but I'm going to show you how to make a stab proof vest. You're going to need a chopping board. This one's quite a thin chopping board, um, but again you don't want this to be too heavy because then you'll never actually wear it. Uh, so it needs to be practical. I'm going to be chopping off uh, the handle part just so I've got a nice rectangular shape here. Next you will need some aluminium, you can get this from any good DIY shop, B&Q, home base, things like that. Um, this stuff is a little bit on the thin side, um, it's 0.8mm thick, so it's almost 1mm thick. But this stuff doesn't have to be thick because the chopping board is the main part of the defence of this. This just guides knives to the chopping board so they don't slide off. And finally, the last thing you will need uh, is some corrugated metal, I think it's called. Not quite sure. Uh, we're just going to call it mesh because I believe that's what it is anyway. Uh, it, I believe this is just a mild steel mesh. Again, I got this from the same shop that I got the aluminium from. The chopping board, you can just use one lying around or buy one purposefully for the build. This one is 50 centimeters by 25 centimeters in length. We won't need all of that because we're going to be chopping it down to match the size of the chopping board anyway. And um, 500 millimeters would be too long for the average human chest anyway. Right, other stuff you'll need is some um, duct tape, mainly just for um, marking the uh, cut we're going to make across the chopping board. Uh, marker pen, just put a few dots on places where we're going to need to drill holes for the bolts to hold everything together. A file just to clean off any sharp edges because we want this thing to protect us and not harm us. A tenon saw or a wood saw just to cut through the chopping board. A hacksaw to cut through the aluminium. And various washers, nuts, bolts, etc. So these are all the sizes you need. Right, step one is. Mark off the chopping board where you need to uh, cut it. Um, now, you could just leave the handle on and tie some paracord or some nylon straps or something like that around to secure it to yourself. But I'm just going for the minimalistic style of uh, just one board without any gaps in because this could be a weak point. So I'm just going to do it there, it doesn't need to be 100% perfect, that's just going to give me a straight-ish line to cut through with a wood saw. Got to mention that you might also need a vise or a um, G clamp or F clamp for this. Uh, 
and apologies for the terrible filming. I haven't made a video in years. I just cut through the entire board here, discarded the handle, a, and uh, took a metal file just to get rid of some of the excess plastic and uh, round out the corners slightly. The next step is to cut everything else to the right shape to match the board. Um, so to start out we're going to do the aluminium and then we're going to probably have to cut the mesh with um, some tin snips or a pair of pliers with cutters. Okay so the easiest way to do this is just to put that down on the flat surface, get the chopping board, put it up next to it, we want a tiny bit of overhang on each side we can always file that down later to make it flush if it's uncomfortable to wear. Uh, we'll get rid of all the sharp points on the corners anyway. And now you just need to use your marker pen. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Line across there. Then use the hacksaw to cut that off. Okay, once again clamp it in place as best you can and start cutting. I'll come back when I've done that. Okay, we're back. That had to be the wonkiest cut known to man, but yet again, doesn't matter too much. You fix everything, straighten everything up at the end, just before putting it together. Okay, so we have the board and the aluminium layer on top. Now we just have to make the other one, which will be getting this, turn it to the right size, then we can start attaching this all together. Okay, I've just marked it here, and now I'm going to cut it. Then I will start to drill the holes, and I'll get back to you then. Okay, there it is. It's not pretty. But this is just more of to uh, prove the concept and make one that actually looks nice. So we've got cut down chopping board. You could always just buy a chopping board without a handle on it. That would be a lot easier from the start. You wouldn't have to cut anything. Uh, we have the aluminium on top of that. And then we've got our mesh. Sort of acting like the chain mail in a police issue stab proof vest. Um, so the thing is with this. Once you uh, have a knife attack it, stab this, which hopefully never happens, but if it did, uh, the aluminium catches it and stops it veering off anywhere. Uh, so does the uh, mesh as well. Um, so most of the force of the blow is going to be directed towards the aluminium, and then that's going to direct it to the chopping board behind, which hopefully stops it. If any, um, In any case, if it doesn't stop it, then hopefully the knife won't be able to get through one of these. It'll only be able to go through so far, uh, just the point of it, uh, before it gets stopped by one of the uh, diamonds there, just like chainmail. Okay, let's draw some holes and put this thing together. Okay, so here we have the chopping board, place the small washer on the bolt, 
put it through the back of the chopping board, through the red part first. Then you want to take your large washer, place it on top of that, on top of the other side so it can't come back through. Then the locking nut. Now because the bolt is so thin and the locking nut is so small on this one, it's a bit hard to do up. So what we're going to take is just a first head screwdriver and a pair of pliers. All you have to do is hold that and then tighten it up from the back side there. Okay, we've tightened it all up. This is what the finished product would look like. As you can see, really rough, really poor cuts. But I was just trying to do this as fast as possible. And if you needed to make one of these in a hurry, you could. Also easy to make a lot of these for quite cheap. Uh, this one probably costs less than um, 15 pounds altogether. So it's all tight there. Now I wanted to secure this to myself with some nylon uh, webbing, but I couldn't actually find my uh, supply of it. Um, so if I did have some webbing, I would have uh, taken this apart, put the webbing um, right here and used a bigger washer to go against that and then just screw it all back down again. Uh, do that there and there and then round here you'd put a horizontal piece to go around the waist possibly with a uh, plastic buckle or something to undo it quickly. Okay I've connected that to the step ladder as you can see it's going to have a bit of give anyway the step ladder is going to move slightly uh, this is got nothing behind it other than tape holding it there to these two posts so it's got a bit of give hopefully that helps uh, simulate the human torso uh, first up Mr Chav Mr Criminal is going to stab it with a wall hanger not really meant to be used for anything not even meant to be used for cutting at all but if they can find it if they can get it, they're going to use it, no matter what it is. Uh, Mr. Chav's quite a smart one, and he's going to be using a glove. Here we go. Yep, that didn't even make it through the uh, aluminium. Of course, it didn't get stopped by the chain at all because it didn't actually uh, pass through enough for the tip to get caught on those pieces. Let's just try that again. Yep, same again, didn't even go through the aluminium. Right, fail. Protects against that. In the bin, goodbye. Next, we shall try the wood chisel, try and get it so it's facing this way, and just re secure this to the tape. It would be a good idea to have weapons and stuff here for his uh, excellent comedic champ and uh, thug impressions. There we go. Cool. That went into the chain. We'll call it chain. We know it's the mesh, but we'll call it chain. Uh, so that went into the chain and veered off into the aluminium and only put a small dent into it. Okay, here's another one. Exact same thing, well, otherwise, um, 
Yeah, didn't actually touch the match that time, just hit the aluminium. Didn't do any damage to it, other than putting a tiny dent in it. There we go, there's the powering knife. It does actually have a sharp edge on it, reasonably sharp. That'll definitely hurt you. Goes in the cardboard without any effort at all. Okay. This one's going to be quite hard to hold actually because it's got such a small handle. Hopefully, I don't slip up onto the blade. But, like I said, this attacker's smart and he's wearing a glove. Okay, so here are the results of that last stab. It bent the entire tip of the knife, and I can feel that the knife is no longer straight all the way up the blade. It's got a gradual bend to the right now. This is absolutely useless. Uh, so all you could really do now with it is slash, but no longer stab. So stab proof vest. Absolutely works with this. Rubbish. Now, I could have got a better kitchen knife, obviously, but I didn't want to damage the ones that I'm actually going to use in the kitchen. Uh, so I just went to the cheapest place and bought the cheapest knives, which is what the criminals would do if they wanted to get a knife anyway. You're not going to spend a lot of money on a knife that you're just going to murder someone with, or mug someone with, and then later throw it away. Um, yeah. So you're not going to go to a website and spend, you know, anything from £20 and upwards to even a few hundred pounds for a knife to uh, cause someone harm. Uh, the new knife laws are pretty strange that they've introduced um, on the offensive weapons list anyway. Kitchen knives aren't on there. Obviously you can't ban kitchen knives. They're in every home. Even if people aren't buying them, they're going to steal them, use them for criminal activity. So. The real thing we need to do is help people protect themselves rather than just ban everything that can be used for personal protection or anything like that anyway. Um, things like this, knife proof vests, stab vests, they're totally legal. You can pretty much wear them wherever. Um. Okay, let's test the big knife. There we go. Okay, first stab. That did absolutely nothing, just a scratch. The whole knife has bent. Okay, there it is. Yep, the whole knife now bends slightly to the left. I'm just going to try it because I know someone might bring this up. Uh, I'm going to try it in the sort of ice pick, sort of medieval dagger grip. There we go. Okay, so the last two did a tiny bit more. Um, they actually made it into the chopping board, but the knife is really starting to get compromised now. Um, so we're going to call that a fail as well. So there you have it. One knife resistant, pretty much knife proof plate for anyone sacking you with anything like a kitchen knife or a folding knife. This would definitely save your life against that. Obviously there are some weapons that can get through these, but the chances of anyone in a gang or any sort of mugger or violent person having one of those on them is very, very, very slim. Uh, as you can see, most of the damage is just cosmetic. There's a couple of scratches, uh, small indents in the aluminium sheet underneath. The only two that got through were those ones there. You can kind of see a bit of the red chopping board uh, behind it. But absolutely nothing got through the other side. Eventually, if the knife had actually gone deeper than that, uh, the mesh on the front would have caught the blade 
and protected you just as chainmail does. There you have it. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you make something similar to this. If you do, uh, leave a comment on this video. Tell me how it went. Obviously, I need to make this one look a bit pretty. You know, less ugly maybe. And uh, attach some straps at a later date when I can actually find that. Make sure to subscribe to Weapon Collector, like the video, and hit that bell notification button. Bye.